All righty, there we go. And this will be far enough for me to start zero meshing things just because everything's really blocked out, right? So, um, so I would just like uh, dynamo mesh this together, uh, make sure everything's good. Um, let's see, let's turn that off. Okay, so, um, so now we have um, everything kind of put together. So what I do is I control shift D and I duplicate the mesh. So I have a high res and then I'm gonna have my low res and let me uh, go back to standard UI. Okay, so um, what you can do is you can just go here, you can go to geometry, you can go to zero mesher and you can do um, half of what you have and you can move it down or you can just have uh, uh, adapt, adaptive size uh, with a high polygon count and um, let's just say it's all polygrouped into one polygroup. So what this is gonna do, usually what I do is, um, I mean, for like a game ready face, it's like, I mean, for like an MMO, it's probably gonna be seven to 10. So we'll put 10 here um, and then just hit zero measure. And we'll see what we get. Quick pause to introduce today's video sponsor class creatives they offer a top ranked game design curriculum online you'll have access to instructors with over 25 years of professional industry experience and over a decade of accredited university level instruction get started today for free with a link in the description but you can also help guide it a bit as well so you know we got a pretty good uh result here um, zero mesher is never going to give you a game ready mesh. It's going to give you something that's going to be a whole lot easier to sculpt on. And it's going to give you a whole lot more to, uh, kind of, um, work with. Um, but that's about it, right? Like right here, this is definitely not going to work for like, a, a game or anything like that. Right. So what we can do is we can make it a little bit easier on ourselves. So with that, um, what I want to do is I want to go through here and I want to mask anything I want to have an, uh, an edge loop. And then I want to press control W. And so now that's a new poly group, right? So if I hold control, you can still see that I'm masking within the other poly group and I don't want to do that. Right. I don't want to have to go back and remask this and re poly group it. So what you can do is you can go brush uh, masking, uh, auto masking, and then mask by polygroups and bring this all the way to 100. And so long as you start in polygroup that's not your original one, then it will never go over it, right? So, but this applies to every brush. Right. So if you start seeing some weird things going on um, that you don't want to happen, you got to make sure you go to brush and turn this back all the way down. OK, so whenever you turn this on, it applies to every single brush that you use. So I want to have another one right here. Control W. I want to have a, a nose right here. So I'm going to mask this. Gonna mask that. Control W. Um, I want to have the lips their own thing. So, boom. Right there. Control W. Uh, probably make it a little bit sharper. There. Control W. That's good enough. And then I want one with the orbicularis auris here. Control W. I uh, want it kind of for the ear here. Control W. Um, and that's pretty much setting up our face. You can also just, um, I'm going to use mask lasso. That's BML. And Get that, um, grab this. So I hold a uh, control shift and it's going to select this 
purple polygroup. And I'm just going to press Control W. And now I've got that, right? So now I've kind of got like the edge loop of that, edge loop of the major features. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say keep groups. And then I'm going to um, say, and then zero mesh. And so now we got edge loops around all the areas that we want. Right. And so now what we can do is um, now we can transfer the geometry from the the high to the low. So um, what we can do is go to project right here. And this is your distance. Uh, the, the more subdivision levels that you have, you probably want to bring this further and further down just so, you know, your the back of your head isn't mixing with your ear and everything. And you get all these weird polygons everywhere. So you can do project all. Uh, it's going to say one or more visible sub tools has poly paint data. Would you like to project that? You can say yes or no. I just put always yes. So it's easier. Control D. And let's just make sure that these two are the only ones um, showing. And then project, Control D, project, Control D, project. And now we have all of the information from our previous model on our low poly model. So now we can shift D to go down, D to go back up. And then if you need more resolution, it's control D. And then that'll add another subdivisional level here. And so um, generally I try not to work too high until the very end uh, because you can accomplish a lot kind of like in this area. Uh, yeah, and then I still have my poly group on. So even with my smooth brush, it's giving me this weird result. So we're going to bring this back down, smooth it out. And now we've got something that we're looking for. Um, so let's say we want to add horns, right? So we would do this. Right, because you can still get a good amount out of here, you know, and then you would put horns separately. You wouldn't pull them out from here unless you're in sketch phase, which is your Dynamesh phase, right? We're sketching everything in. So if you were going to make, you know, this into Hellboy or something like that, and you wanted to put uh, horns and, um, you know, like it just depends on how drastic the changes are. You know, if you're, but in terms of edge loops, you, you pretty much have it kind of set to where you can make it any humanoid character that you wanted. Any, um, you know, if you're going to, unless you made it into the predator or something, then we would, you know, go back to Dynamesh. We would do what we're going to do, kind of block it in as far as you had it, and then start doing things like this to where you have a little bit more, um, control over the edge loops that, that it gives you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So we've got all that. Um, let's turn all this on. So um, what I would do is um, I would definitely put the head and the neck together. Um, on your next round and then practice uh, the edge loops um, method with the masking and the polygroups. Um, just some anatomical things. You want to be careful of this going too far forward. Your Adam's apple does protrude out, but it's not in front of your esophagus. Right. So there, there, and then you um, a little bit, it's kind of a triangular when we look down at it. Oops. So it's kind of triangular here. And what we want to do is we want to have this flat, a little bit more um, horizontal. And then after the neck, we want to put in that S curve and give him a little bit more anterior deltoid or front deltoid. 
and then you'll get rid of that triangle feeling. Um, that's looking good. Bring this down a little bit. Right there. And then in between here, right, there's nothing going on. Right there. So um, you want to have a, a fossa in here or an empty space. Okay. And then as it comes down, this is going to get really, really thin because it's just two little tendons right here on your sternum, right? So, um, and then we have the, the pit of the neck because our esophagus has to go behind our sternum. So we want to have a pit of the neck here. Right there and then as this comes together it's pretty much going to be about that then so then we have to kind of sculpt it in that way okay. something like that and then um there is going to be it's kind of like a, a pro move i guess you want to call it but um halfway down the um sternocleidomastoid you're going to have this area and then you're going to have a triangle of fossa or empty space right there but that's about it right so boom just like that okay but the neck is looking good uh be careful of this swooping bit here um because you want the end of the skull to be its own thing Right, so we always want to keep a, a more cylindrical feel about this as we're going, as we're uh, making our rounds. Okay. Um, back of the head is looking good. Back third, um, you can probably soften this transition here. Um, looking good, maybe a little bit down right there. Um, ear could be a little bit more forward. And that's looking good. Yeah, it was a good looking face though. Very heroic. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Well, I appreciate all of you. Uh, if you have any questions, try to do my best to answer those as soon as possible.